Welcome back to The Lead. I'm Jake Tapper. And our national lead today, the legal battle over which bathrooms transgender individuals can use in North Carolina. It's becoming more heated by the day. The state and the Justice Department have sued one another over the law after the Obama administration warned that the so-called bathroom bill violates the Civil Rights Act. We're going to speak to North Carolina Governor Pat McGrory, who signed the controversial law in a few seconds. But first, how did we get here? You've likely seen thousands of these signs over the years and probably given much thought to them. But today, the gender assignment on restroom doors is at the center of a legal brawl between the U.S. Justice Department and the state of North Carolina. In its so-called bathroom bill, HB2, North Carolina's legislature demands that citizens use the restroom corresponding with the gender on their birth certificate, not the gender with which they identify. Today, we are filing a federal civil rights lawsuit against the state of North Carolina. This week, the Justice Department said the order is an attack on the LGBT community. They created state-sponsored discrimination against transgender individuals who simply seek to engage in the most private of functions in a place of safety and security. The federal and state governments filed dueling lawsuits Monday. The feds going after the state, accusing officials of failing to comply with U.S. anti-discrimination laws. State officials counterpunching with their own suit. Our state legislature believed this was an unnecessary government overreach into the private sector, imposing regulations and impacting one's personal privacy. The stakes are high as the government threatens to pull funding from North Carolina and its influential namesake university. Let's talk more about this with North Carolina Governor Pat McCrory, who joins us live. Governor McCrory, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, Jake. I just want to let you know this actually really started in Houston, Texas, with a referendum, uh, a, a local ordinance in Houston, which was a mandate on all private sector bathrooms uh, brought up by the left, the Democrats, that was defeated by 61 percent of the vote about six months ago. Then it came to Charlotte, North Carolina, an ordinance which was passed, uh, a, a bathroom bill by Democrats on all private sector employees in, in Charlotte. And then all we did was overturn that, very similar to the Houston voters. Our bathroom bill in North Carolina only applies to our schools, our universities, our government buildings, and highway rest stops. Mm -hmm. It is now the Obama administration that is... Um, demanding that they have bathroom policies, not just in North Carolina, but now gender-specific or, or gender um, identity bathrooms for every private sector company in the United States of America with over 15 employees. And that was determined uh, Wednesday by the uh, yeah. chief legal uh, person. So, sir, take a listen to the Attorney General Loretta Lynch, who had this to say earlier in the week. State-sanctioned discrimination never looks good and never works in hindsight. It was not so very long ago that states, including North Carolina, had other signs above restrooms, water fountains, and on public accommodations, keeping people out based on a distinction without a difference. Your response, sir? It's an insult, and it's a political statement instead of a legal statement that it's an insult toward our state and 10 million people that has no relevance to this issue regarding whether a gender identity individual or a boy can go into a girl's restroom to correlate that to the civil rights marches uh, in the 50s and 60s is is totally irresponsible of our chief legal officer of the United States of America. And she forgot to remind just three years ago, the president was against gay marriage. Mm -hmm. So I but don't that's... remember her lecturing her boss on that issue. So th this is a very sensitive issue between privacy and equality, okay. and all we're asking for is the courts to give clarification on what's right, and, and we'll follow the law. Before you signed this law, had there been any incidents in North Carolina in which transgender people's usage of a bathroom was a problem in any way? No, we didn't think there was a problem at all until the Democrats brought this up in Charlotte, North Carolina. We didn't need a bathroom law. We never have asked for a bathroom law. The, the Republicans have never decided 
this. I've never discussed it in a campaign. It's the Democrats in the far left that have brought up this well, well, they brought uh, up, issue they brought of up the needing law. bathroom laws. They brought up the law, but then you signed a law to overrule their law. But here's, a, here's another question, sir. That's correct. That's, I, I want to make that point. They right. made a mandate of bathroom laws on all private sector entities. That was Charlotte. And now the Justice Department right. has done the same thing for how are, everyone. How, how do you plan on enforcing this on the ground at a public restroom? Any way we've been doing it before, trespassing matters. I don't know how the Charlotte ordinance actually had a fine uh, regarding for the private sector, and I didn't know how the liberals were going to enforce that either, and I, that needed to be asked. I think this was an argument that we didn't need to have in this country or in our state, uh, but uh, this is an agenda by the far left, and for some reason the national media is saying the far right brought this up. I had no interest in this subject, but now that the Justice Department is basically making a, a civil rights claim that every private sector employer in the United States and every, uni and every university in the United States must have uh, gender expression or gender identity bathroom choices for individuals. And this is, in the most, and this is not just in bathrooms, this yeah. is in shower facilities and in, well, me, in locker rooms or changing rooms. Let's talk about schools and not universities. Let's talk yeah. about grade schools and high schools. As you may know, yeah. transgendered children have a very difficult time fitting in, being accepted. They have very high suicide rates. What are you telling the teachers at schools in North Carolina where, say, a 12-year-old who identifies as a girl, though her birth certificate said boy, what do you tell teachers about her if she's using the girl's bathroom? You're saying stop letting her use that bathroom? No, I think we ought to make special circumstances for those individuals in a, in a unisex restroom or shower, which I've encouraged by executive order in our universities. But now the Civil Rights Division of the U.S. Department has de deemed those types of arrangements to be discriminatory, that we cannot look for alternatives for these very sensitive needs for these, whether it be a junior high child or a college but student. But you just said, and I wanna, you just said they should have the 12 year old, needs. you just said you're sensitive to those needs of like a 12 year old transgender child, but you, you're not letting that girl use the girl's bathroom. You're saying they should use a special unisex bathroom. Are you not making That's that, correct. are you not making that child's life much more difficult? I'm also worried about the other kids, uh, that there's an expectation of privacy for the other girls or other boys in their junior high uh, locker rooms or shower facilities, that the only other people coming into there are the people of that same gender, built as the same gender. And can you imagine the potential problem there? So we need to work through these problems and not throw hand grenades at this issue because it's a new sensitive issue on all sides for families, for young girls and boys, and for the transgender population. But to have the civil uh, uh, the Justice Department come out with a massive interpretation of the Civil Rights Act for every employer in the United States now is something that uh, I think needs clarification by the federal courts. And frankly, I think there's a time where the Republicans and Democrats in the Congress need to revisit the 1964 Civil Rights Act mm -hmm. and revisit uh, all this issue because um, these are complex issues in North Carolina, yeah. for whatever reason, politically has become the target uh, by the left on this agenda, and now they're going to be moving to other states. And it, it requires sensitive discussion and, and sensitive debate, which the nation has Governor. not had. Uh, but now we're in this situation. Thank you so much, Governor. I really appreciate your time. Thank you, Jake. I appreciate it very much.